I'm Beth Bostwick with You Can Choose, and today I'm here with Rusty Gaylord of Silicon Valley Dream Builders. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Rusty. And I've also got Peter, also of You Can Choose, here with me today. And we are doing the second of four webinars around leadership. And this started, gosh, we met this summer and we decided we really have a lot of energy around helping people become who they, their best self, I guess. And we really wanted to focus on leadership. And so we have a series that we started last week with self-leadership. And you can go to our websites in the chat box and it'll have the locations for you to go if you'd like to see what we talked about then. Today, we're gonna to talk about courage. And then next week, we're going to talk about grit and failing fast, which seems like an oxymoron, but it's really not. And then the next one will be about your network. And the importance of, of leveraging that network and pretty much everything that you do. So make sure you check back in to hear what we have to say. Exactly. Because I'd like to um, have everybody go ahead and put your comments into chat because then we can follow that along as we're as we're talking and hopefully answer your questions. So with that, uh, I'd like to ask Rusty the first question. And that's really how do you define courage? Great question. So for those of you who watched our last discussion on self-leadership, courage came up a number of times. And I think courage is often, uh, there's a misperception around courage. A lot of people think about courage as being fearless. And it's really not because courage doesn't exist in the absence of fear. Courage is all about taking steps forward, moving forward, even when you're unsure of, what the, of the outcome, when you're, uh, you're nervous, you're afraid, when any of you have that sense of uncertainty, that's really what courage is about. And I just, I, I've, I think that's so important. I just, I, the, the more I get into this work and the more I learn and grow personally, the more I recognize that every time I do something new, I do it with wobbly knees because I've never done it before. And it's, I'm nervous about it. I don't know what's going to happen. But it's in that action, A, that's what courage is. And B, that's where things start to shift. That's where the magic happens. Cool. That's great. Peter, would you add anything to that? Well, I think Rusty did a perfect um, job of talking about that, how, how courage in, is not the absence of fear, but it's taking, uh, taking fear on. And I agree completely. There's many, many times in, in our life, my life, where I've been deathly afraid of doing something. Actually, just yesterday, I was at a, a conference and I had the opportunity to go and, and meet with people. Um, and it was like, oh, well, should I go sit with these folks? They're, they're so important and big and they just got, I'm sure, very detailed and specific things to talk about. But eh, I'm just going to go over there and sit and see what happens. And we talked about the weather, we talked about sports, and we talked about just little tiny things just like everybody else did. So it's one of those things where you can be afraid to do something, but once you go out and do it and take the courage to make it happen, it's easy. All right, so now I've got a little bit of a twist on the question I'm gonna ask you guys, because I think this is really, um, you've touched on this a little bit, but how can you help people understand the relationship between fear and courage and when do you you know emphasize more you know where do you have to really take a step forward a courageous step forward even though maybe there's a, a wall of fear in front of you it could be personal or it could yeah. be work but um rusty do you want to go ahead and try and talk about that yeah i i sure I, you know the, and and peter i appreciate you sharing the story about your experience yesterday and it got me thinking like where have i done this in my life and the one of the big examples I have, well, there, there's two, I guess, but the first one was really making the choice to move in the direction of what I'm doing now, which is as building a career and building my profession as a speaker and a life coach. And for me, the first step of that was signing up to get trained and certified because I didn't, I didn't want to just wing it. I wanted to do this with some experience, with some backing. And so I did, I go into a certification program and that was an investment. It was an investment of time and energy and money and all of those things. And when I did it, there was a part of me that was freaking out. You know, part of me was like, knew that this was the right direction. But there was a part of me that was, you know, this was so different from anything I had done in my life. 
I had always worked in corporate America. I had worked at giant companies. Most recently, I, when I was making this decision, I was working at Apple, which is a huge company. And I had, you know, I went to business school, all of that stuff. And so for me to go down the path of entrepreneurship as a life coach was a dramatic change in direction. And for me, the fear was, what if it doesn't work out? What if I don't follow through? You know, I'm putting a lot of money and time and energy into this. What if this isn't the right path for me? I mean, so many different fears come up. And one of the things I've learned about fear is it doesn't always sound like fear. It doesn't always feel like fear. It can feel like practicalities. Like I'm just, I'm being a responsible person because this is not the right time to make this decision. I mean, for me, when I'm like back to that story, I was in the middle of getting divorced. And that was very time consuming because it was a contentious process and I was in the midst of it. It took a lot of time and energy. So in a way, this was not a convenient time and it wasn't a practical time, but it was the opportunity was there and I said yes. And that I believe is where the courage comes in. It's being willing to follow your heart and being willing to say, you know, to go with that part of you that knows this is a positive step in a good direction. And I believe that's what courage is. And the fear is the, you know, it's, it's everything else. So I can relate so much to what you said, Rusty. I'm sitting here thinking, oh, we probably have some similar experiences there along the lines. We didn't do the divorce part, huh. but we've had certainly the, the jumping off the bridge scariness. So Peter, do you want to talk about that and some of the courage to, to those pieces? Well, I don't think I, no, I want to talk about it. You can talk about that if you want. What I wanted to go to was, is, is the importance of listening to yourself because sometimes that fear is telling you something. It's really telling you that, hey, maybe this isn't where you need to go. So I'm, I'm not, and, and the good example is running across a, a busy highway, right? If you're afraid that you're going to get hit because you're running across a busy highway, well, it's a good idea not to run across a busy highway. So just, and, and you could think of yourself as courageous for running across a busy highway, but most people would call that stupid. Right, so you want to think, you want to balance that, balance jumping into something and overcoming it just because it's there and you're afraid of it. To understanding where that fear is coming from, is it is it like Beth used the perfect phrase called manufactured fear? Are you making stuff up in your head that's telling you that well this could happen and this could happen and this could happen and this could happen and, this could happen and oh my gosh, wouldn't that be bad? When in fact you're just taking the first step. So it's good, it's good to listen to yourself and figure out what that fear means before you go rushing out into it. But then once you understand what it is, maybe you're making it up, and maybe the first five or six steps really aren't that dangerous for you. Like for me, sitting down with these people at this lunch, what are they gonna do? <laughs> Chop me up or something or you know, throw something at me? They're not gonna do that. They're gonna say, kindly say no or something. So that's the worst that could happen. So it's important to understand where you, what that, where that fear is coming from, before you go out and jump, jump into it. So, so building on that point, Rusty, are there things that you think would be valuable for people to understand when they, they hit a tough spot, as you inevitably do whenever you're doing something, that you think would be helpful for them to understand? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so I think part of what I, and listening to, to, to Peter kind of building on what you said, one of the things that comes to me is, is always to ask the question, why am I even contemplating doing this thing? Um, you know, if we're talking about running across the highway, it's like, well, why, why are you doing that? And is there another safer way to do that, right? That's actual physical danger. And that's, that's a whole nother realm, right? Because I think most of the, most of us, when we think about fear on a day-to-day -day basis is not for our it's not for our, it's not life and death kind of fear. Most of us, it's about, you know, it's about reputation or it's about, will people like me or, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and so I think, you know, going back to this question of why am I doing these things? And for me, you know, to, to connect back to, to this example that I gave and, and even to another point when I was making the decision to leave Apple, and now make this my full-time job. Because originally, I was doing them in parallel. It's like, well, hey, I've, you know, I've still got Apple to fall back on. And then at some point, it was the right time for me to leave that. And again, all of these fears came up. And I just kept going back to, why am I doing this? 
what, what, what is important to me about this step that I'm taking and where, where is it leading me? And if I'm happy with the direction that it's leading me, with of course a bunch of uncertainty, but am I happy generally that I'm with, it, with that direction? Then that feels like the courageous thing to do is to confront that fear and move forward. So, so the important question you ask yourself is why? You, you check back in, which is actually something that we talked about last week on self-leadership was, you know, are you still going the right direction? Does it make sense? Or have you hit a fork in the road, so to speak? So Peter, do you want to talk about things like that that you've had to had to work through? Well, let me put it back to you. That way you have a chance to answer <laughs> answer some of your own questions here. So you guys are the experts though, really. No, we're, we're just as much an expert as you are. So go ahead and answer, answer your own question. So I think that um, uh, certainly what Rusty said is really important about um, asking yourself why you're doing it. And I think that when you ask yourself why you're doing something, you're, you're really checking in, you're kind of doing that perhaps course correction or yes, maintain the course, keep going, uh, this is the right way. But I also think that sometimes there's roadblocks that get thrown in your way that make things a little un unpredictable, let's just say. And it's, it's sometimes a, um, a point at which you have to say, oh my gosh, you know, all the things that I thought I was doing it for, maybe those aren't really the right reasons. Maybe I wasn't valuing some other things that were important to me as part of making this shift. And it's really those, those kinds of things that come up, the, I'll say inconveniences or the major problems that show up, those I think are just as important to look at as part of the context in terms of what it is you're doing. So Rusty, you mentioned the divorce and how that was really a tough thing that you had to work through at the same time you were looking at starting this business. But in fact, I would argue in retrospect, you probably see that as a way to really help you um, galvanize your, your energy to in fact go forward and be successful because this was even more important to you to do versus maintain whatever you were doing at Apple. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yeah. I I love that, Beth. I think it's, I love that idea. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard just to, to put a little phrase around that. I've heard the expression, life does not happen to you. It happens for you. And all of the things in life that happen to us, all of those things that feel like obstacles or challenges or barriers to the kinds of life that we want to live, to the kind of success we want to have in our life, all of those are there for our learning and for our growth. And we can resent them and be angry about it and, you know, wish they'd go away and, you know, all of that. But in the end, if we're open-minded about it and say, well, what is there for me to learn in this? And, you know, when we talk about courage, I think that's a very courageous way to look at life. When something that many people would say is works against you or is a bad thing, when something like that happens and you can take that and say, there's something in this for me. This is, this is happening to me so that there's something for me to learn. And if you can take that, I think that's a very courageous outlook on life. Yeah, and actually, that's also another way to start to see the opportunities that are available to you as well. And that's one of the things that I know Peter and I have talked about, how you have to sometimes look at those little small things in your life that actually might be really important to you, but you really, because you've never really paid attention to them, don't really value them or even understand them in some sense. Very much so, yeah. Having the courage to... And I love what you said, Rusty, the importance of just sometimes just taking the steps, right? Just moving forward makes all the difference in the world. And, and oftentimes that, that's what happens. When you're afraid, you feel frozen. And you feel frozen inside and you feel frozen outside. And, and what sometimes happens is you get fear and then potential regret and all that stuff tied in together. And you just don't know what to do. And that's just like a really, really difficult place um, to, to live and work from, especially if you want to be a leader, right? Because you're, hey, you're supposed to be out front. Mm -hmm. And even if you're you know, a positional leader and you're afraid, you still need to be out front. So how do you get your head around that? And I think understanding, like Rusty said, and Beth said very clearly there, understanding that fear is something that we often make that we often create ourselves with these scenarios that we have in our head. And if we can kind of tone that down so that we can understand the why we're doing something and understand clearly why that, what that fear means to us and what the, you know, the worst case scenarios or the best case scenarios, those kinds of situations that get a better handle on that, 
we can put fear in its place and then be able to step right beyond it. So, so now I'm going to shift gears a little bit because one of the things that I think when you are in that dark space, that's really hard to, you know, figure out how to get out of or move through it, if you will, what kinds of resources would you suggest or how would you, what kinds of resources do you think are available for people to help them through tough, difficult spots? And I'm not thinking about money resources or people resources, but, but maybe ways of thinking resources. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, and, you know, especially, I think, for people who are in a really difficult place and feel stuck there, because I get that. I've had that in my life, right, where, where it, I, the situation is such, but even my thinking is such that I'm, I'm spiraling, and I'm just spiraling through the same thought pattern over and over again. For me, when I get there, I have to physically move. Like, I got to move. I got to do something. I have to, I mean, do jumping jacks, if nothing else. But it's like, I've got to go move my body because for me, it's like, it's like my energy is stuck. And I have to actually, in the movement, it somehow creates some space for me to think something different. Cool. Uh, and then I also want to just build on one thing that Peter alluded to, right? Which is so many of us think through all the different possible scenarios or outcomes when we're considering a path forward. And you, what the words that Peter, you used were best case and worst case scenarios. And just ask yourself, for everyone who's listening, how much of your time do you spend thinking about the best case scenario? And how much of your time do you spend thinking about the worst case scenario? Oh, that's brilliant. Good idea. <laughs> that's very, very important. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I had something called the Itty Bitty Shitty Committee. I can't take uh, credit for that that name, but I had a couple of those committees in my head for the longest time, and it was really difficult to overcome that. But but that's a really really important thing to do. I love the physical movement, though. That that is very very powerful. I know I've used that, Peter. No, no, I, th I think I think I cut you off a little bit there. Go ahead, Rusty. Oh, that, no, that's okay. I mean, it's just, you know, even in asking the question, it's just that is an opportunity to shift our focus, right, is away from the worst case and towards the best case. Yeah. Because just back to the simple principle that where we're putting our attention, we're going to have more of that in our life. So what, where do you want to put your attention on the worst outcome or the best outcome? I mean, that's obvious, but it's not something that most of us do. <laughs> I think that's I think that's brilliant. We talk about that all the time when when in our workshops and you can read it in, in a lot of our posts out there, talking about the most important thing to think about when you're trying to make any kind of headway is well, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Right. And if you if you're focused on, like you said, Rusty, the worst case scenario, well, I'm hoping that's not what you want, right? You want the what more you should be wanting, or otherwise you wouldn't call it the best case scenario, right? So that's what you want. So the more energy you put in that, the, the better off you'll be and the more aligned you'll be with getting that. Mm -hmm. So we're coming close to the end of the, the half hour. So I'd like to just um, pop up the screen here. We've got a couple of takeaways that we wanted to um, leave you with because this is, this is an important part of um, any kind of leadership is being able to take action, particularly when it's a difficult situation. You feel like you don't have any options or you don't feel like you have the support. So one of the things that we talked about was um, taking action, even when it's intimidating. The whole, whole concept of courage is really stepping forward. The second one is courage can be empowering. And that's really a way for you to recognize that even though you feel like you're in a daunting scenario, it can actually be empowering. It may, um, enable you to take steps you might not otherwise take under normal circumstances. And then the third one is fear is a really powerful emotion. Um, we do manufacture it, um, but you can learn to understand, you, excuse me, you can learn more about yourself if you pay attention to what that fear actually means to you and discover, well, maybe there's some things in there that really aren't things to be afraid of, but they're things that you can actually leverage to move forward in your own life, whatever that, whatever way that is. So, Rusty, do you want to add anything to that? I just, I, uh, no, I think that was a great summary. And uh, I just, the, the only thing I would just add is that fear is 
is part of the journey for anyone who is moving forward in life, who is growing, who is achieving greatness in their own way, whatever that looks like for that person. By definition, that means expanding as a person. And when we expand as a person, we do new things. And when we do new things, it's uncomfortable. We have some fear. So I just want to normalize it. Uh, you know, we talk about it as if like it's a bad thing, but it's just part of the journey. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and I would say that um, fear fear can be embraced. It's something you can can look at and say, oh wow, this I, I have a fear coming up. That means there's a there's an adventure for me. <laughs> well, no, there you go. That's a great way to end this because I think that that in fact flips the whole. Uh, coin from one side of being afraid to, in fact, maybe seeing that there's a big opportunity that might be hidden behind the fear. I love it. So, I love it. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for paying attention. We hope you learned something that you'll be able to use in your own your own life as you go forward.